This is the recipe I'm going to use for soap. Um, I'm using 400 grams of lard, 200 grams of coconut oil. Essentially you can use, for the, this amount of soap, you can use any combination of oils or fats you want. So I could use 100 of coconut oil, 100 of lard, 100 of Crisco, 100 of um, olive oil, canola oil, as long as it totals 600 whatever combination you want. I This is a, a general recipe that I, gener I like. So I'm going to use 600 grams of fat, 400 lard, 200 coconut, 78 grams of lye, 12 grams of beeswax, 228 grams of distilled water, and my oil scents, the essential oil scents. And I use more than just a few drops. Um, I'll maybe show that in the end. But it, These little jars, I might use up to, I don't know, you know, 20 or 30 drops just to make sure it smells good. But that goes in at the very end. If you put it into oil, the scent cooks out of it and there, you don't have any scent. I will also use a little bit of tea tree that you add at the end for and bacterial purposes. <coughs> Again, this isn't, uh, I'm not going step by step how to. I'm showing you what my recipe is, and I'll just kind of describe the steps to you. So, for starters, we're, we're going to measure out our, our fats. We've already got our beeswax in the crock pots. I'm making two different recipes, so I have uh, two crock pots going. I've got 12, my 12 grams of beeswax. This is the stuff I purchased, the pellets. I'm not using my own beeswax here. I just didn't feel like shaving it. I already had this bag of stuff, so I'm using the, the stuff I bought years ago. Like I said, I'm doing two batches. One is going to be an experiment. And the other one's going to be a lavender tea tree. This is a chemical reaction this is a science project so when you measure this stuff out you need to be pretty precise I'm using a scale that's measuring grams um, just gonna put that in and get it warming up So the experiment, and this is the lard, it's just, you know, rendered pork fat. The experiment is going to be, I like zest, like the regular dark green zest, or Irish spring, sorry, not, not zest, Irish spring. I really like that smell. And I don't know what combinations of oils I could use to get to that smell. So I'm gonna make a batch of soap and I'm going to shred one bar of Irish Spring and add that to it at the end and see if that gives me that scent. I don't care about the color necessarily, but if it gives me the scent I'm looking for. I'm holding off on, on the, the lye and water mixture because if I make it too soon it'll start to cool off and you want your fats in your lye mixture to be about the same temperature within maybe 10 degrees of each other when you mix them. So uh, I'm going to get the oils up to temperature and the big part of that is getting the, the wax melted because it takes a lot more to melt that than it does the oil. When that wand mixer becomes invaluable is when uh, you start the saponification process and you're going up and down with it, mixing the lye mixture in with uh, oils. It really helps speed that up along with the heat from the crock pots. 
the difference between the hot batch soap method and the cold is the hot batch, once it gets hard, you can use it. You don't even have to really let it set and cure. You can. You can, you can let it set for months if you want. For the cold batch, you have to let it set and cure um, because that time is what makes everything get good and hard and solid. With the hot batch, that heat speeds that process up so you can use the soap much faster. The danger factor, especially if you're using a crock pot between the two, is virtually zero. Um, the lye you have to use whether you're using hot batch or cold batch, so it really doesn't much matter. Um, you know, I guess if you're doing an open flame on a stovetop or something, you know, it might be a little harder to regulate heat. It might be a little harder to do, but with a crock pot, you know, once you get that oil and stuff melted, it's pretty much turn that crock pot to low and just monitor and you're not going to have any problems. With the hand mixer or hand the wand mixer and the, um, crock pot, I guess I'm in my eye. The process goes pretty fast. Say fragrance clearly. They don't say what for. The oil in the big crock pot is melted, and most of the wax has. There's a tiny bit of oil in the bottom of the little crock pot that hasn't melted, but they're both around that 143 degrees. So we're we're pretty close to doing what we need to do. I'm going to start preparing the the lye mixtures. So I'm just using distilled water. I need 228 grams of distilled water. So that's 228 and it looks like, I've never looked before, but it looks like it's just shy of a cup of water. Not a full cup, but just about. I've never actually looked at that before. So this is the important part of uh, soap making and the safety issues. You want to measure lye out in a glass container if at all possible. You, you can use metal, don't use plastic. This mixture should be done in glass. Um, not in metal because metal will even heat up faster and get hot. This Pyrex glass measuring cup will uh, withstand, withstand the heat. It's got a handle on it. Um, I wear gloves. Of course, I wear gloves for almost everything just because my hands get so dry. But uh, you, you should wear a mask or a respirator. When I do, when I mix the lye in the water, I'll stand back so the fumes don't get me. You definitely don't want to be over top of it because those fumes are not good to inhale. But for extra security or caution, you could put on a respirator or at least a well N95 mask or something like that now, right? But instead, I'm going to stay back. You always want to add your lye to your water, not your water to your lye. I buy the lye online, five pounds at a time. This is food grade uh, lye. It's 99% or 99.9% .9 pure or something like that. So for the lye we need uh, um, 78 grams. Seventy-eight grams of lye. Push that away from me a little bit. And we're just gonna add a little at a time. If you add all this at once, it literally could boil up over the top. We want to dissolve it. And as this starts to heat, you might even see fumes coming off it.
people are afraid, and I was afraid to make soap the first time I, before I ever did it. And that's why I keep separate spoons for everything. <laughs> Originally, that's why I did it, because I was worried about some chemical reaction, because I wasn't doing things right, or cross-contamination, or whatever. Um, what I've learned since then is if you're just careful, follow the weights and measurements, you'll be fine. And I was especially a, nervous about the hot batch soap. And then after researching it, realized it's really the way to go. So you got just the steam coming off of the fumes coming off of this made that lie moist and stick inside there. It's 170, 169 degrees. So right now that crock pot is also 169 degrees. So we're going to uh, start this process. It's 164 and a half. So our water mixture. Is it 160? 2.3. So we're within a couple of degrees. It's where we want to be. We're going to start stirring this in. our soap spoon and you'll see it start to want to saponify already. A chemical reaction is taking place. on low and we're just going to start mixing it. We don't want to add our scent or our other soap too soon otherwise it will cook the smell out of it. I've made that mistake too many times. You gotta wait till it's nearly ready to put in the molds before you add your scent. See, it's already starting to thicken up a bit. Now I'm going to let that sit a little and I'll come back in a little bit and mix it again. At this point, I am going to cover it, help keep some of that heat in and get it going. That'll actually start to rise and come up, so you need to keep your eye on it that you don't just walk away because it could overflow. I haven't had it happen, but it will start to rise and come up. cook it. We'll mix it in. Okay, we're going to add our Irish Spring. I hope this turns out.
So my fear would be that if I add that soap too soon, this cooking process will cook the scent out of it. But we'll find out. I'm going to put this in molds, and then I'm going to come back and add scent to that. Still smells good. You can spend as much time as you want. I'm a scraper. You can spend as much time as you want scraping the bowl or the crock pot out. I tend to be a bit of a scraper. You could also let that sit, scrape it off, and put it in a little container and use it as soap that way. Remember when I was a kid, my grandparents, they always had Irish Spring. or uh, That or uh, Zest. And when the bars got low, or they got mushy, they put them in a little container at the bathroom sink. And you would go in, this is before they had liquid soap, obviously, or you, maybe they did, I just never knew about it. This is a long time ago. You'd go in and you could get a little dab of that out of that dish and scrub your hands with it. That's kind of what you could do with that. Just put it in a little dish. And they might even add a little bit of water to those leftovers to make them mushy like that, but I remember that as a kid. And we're going to do this. That helps get the air bubbles out and settle those in. Generally this recipe makes about two pounds of soap. So now we're going to cover these just basic and then we're going to do this and those will sit there. I'm going to clean these up so I can use them for the next batch. Okay, first I'm going to add tea tree, and this is just antibacterial, and this does not smell good. I don't know, I suppose that ended up being about 20 drops. And now I'm going to add lavender, and I'm going to add a substantial more amount of this, because this is the scent I want. Essentially, I'm, I'm going to start with a half a bottle, and then I'm going to mix it. I'd rather overdo it. I don't buy the actual essential oils brand. This is our local grocery store had this. I don't know, it's you know, like $3 a bottle or $4 a bottle. A lot less expensive. Okay, it smells good, but I want more. I mean, when you lather up with this, I want to smell lavender. I don't I don't want the hint of lavender. I want it to be lavender. We're getting to the point this needs to go in the container. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And then we're going to have to bar, uh, bar it up. I don't know, I used roughly half a bottle of that, I'd say. To start, I'm going to finish off these two. I like these molds the best. I bought these first, and then you got to cut them, which isn't hard, just I like these better. 
and I like this one better than this one because this has the squared corners and this is rounded. Cover it. Right. Now we'll fill these here. So I bought this mold box and then I just made that one. It's out of scrap plywood. With these you kind of need, they're so tall, you kind of need the, the support. Wouldn't have to have it, but it's handy. And I don't think I'm going to need both of these. Alright, let's kind of push that down in there. And we're going to drop it. Try to level it across so it's relatively uniform. You can see how it's already started to kind of dry in those spots. A lot of times that'll start to crumble off when you go to use it. Buddy, that's soap. You don't want to eat that. Some crumbs fell on the floor when that towel went down and the dog thinks he wants to eat it. Alright guys, this is the finished product. Ended up with, uh, sorry you can hear my wife in the background. She's working from home because of this whole quarantine stuff. She's in a meeting. Apparently a funny meeting. Um, Ended up with three and a half pounds of soap between the two batches. So, that's finished product. Just remember, this is easy enough for me to do. Anybody can do it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.